Hi, mamas. We are here with another amazing mother that we get to hear from. Her name is Betsy Harloff. Betsy is the author of a newly released book, Not a Picture Perfect Parent. That is awesome. Unfiltered motherhood from birth to adult adulthood. She is a mother of five children who is no stranger to the pressures of society and can place on a mom to be perfect. In her book, she shares essays of failures and not so perfect moments she and other moms have experienced. When she first started sharing her stories, moms came from all around to share their failures and imperfections too. Betsy's mission is to help moms feel comfortable with breaking the perfect mold, empowering them to shine brightly given all their imperfections. In part, she does this by speaking to mom groups and running book clubs, educating moms about mindfulness and mom-run businesses. Feeling imperfect is more than what's on the outside, and Betsy understands that. Her new online shop will provide tools, trinkets, and botanical products and courses, all designed and created to help center and calm your inner chaos. That sounds amazing. Betsy currently resides in Ohio on a 15-acre homestead, learning unsuccessfully at times how to live off the land. Betsy, we are so happy to have you here today. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Yes, I'm so excited to be here. So... Our kids are growing up in this picture perfect era and Instagram and Facebook and they all feel like, and I feel like it's getting younger and younger where these girls especially feel like they have to be this beautiful little hot thing on the internet. Yes. And um, I, I have a 13 year old daughter and I, I don't let her use social media yet just until she gets a little older because I've heard all the statistics. What are your tips for these moms that have, um, these girls are, and, and boys growing up in this picture perfect world and what advice do you have for them? That we're all struggling. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't have any solid advice for that, honestly, because I'm, I'm living in that situation too. I have a 14 year old daughter and, you know, a 12 year old son and my oldest is now 20. So like he kind of came into that at the late end of it. That's where all their friends are. That's where their community is. Yes. So I really struggle because you don't want to take it away because then they feel isolated. But then if you give it to them, they can get shamed and feel horrible about their self-esteem. And ah, what, what I you, know there's no handbook for this, right? <laughs> no, I, I absolutely have no advice on this one. <laughs> trying to figure it out and struggle too. I mean, we do have, my daughter is on social media, um, but we, we do, I have guidelines on like between what hours she's allowed on it. And mm -hmm. but I, I don't look over her shoulder and see it because I know that if she really wants access to information, I mean, she's going to get it one way or the other. Oh, yeah. She's going to get yes. one of the computers in the house or, you know, my laptop or, and I think it's just honestly just teaching them you are enough and teaching them in your home with love because all these people out there on the internet are not going to be real, right? Yeah. <laughs> and some of those people are their peers and that, but that's just such a hard, hard topic of how, to, how do we teach these kids that it's, life is not perfect like the pictures you're seeing, so... So what do you think is your, your number one takeaway for our moms about this picture perfect persona and, and what, what's your biggest takeaway for these moms? I feel like I have a thousand takeaways. Well, give them to us. We want to hear them. <laughs> yeah. I, like I said, when I left social media, I was, I was bombarded by all these perfect images, but it wasn't until I left and I really started evaluating what those pictures were that I realized that just because, you know, Karen, the name, not really the Karen on the internet, but is posting a picture of her son, you know, winning a trophy, whatever, that even though I felt bad when I saw that, because maybe I was having a bad day, that doesn't make me a bad mom. Just because I saw another mom proud of a moment that she had with her children, she wanted to talk about it. She wanted to shout it from the roof. We all do it more proud. That doesn't... Right. I'm a bad mom. And that was what I was feeling like. And I think a lot of moms are struggling with this because they're seeing perfect image, perfect image, perfect image. And they might be having a really bad day. Because let's face it, when do we scroll the most on social media? 
when we're having a bad day, you know? You're probably right. Yeah. And that's yeah. when we see all the perfect stuff and that only makes it so much worse. So some of my advice would be, hey, if you're having a bad day, don't get on social media because it's not going to help. All you're going to see is perfect images. And if you are going to get on, you need to realize when do you yourself post on social media? Is it when you're proud of something? Is it when you're sharing a good moment? Yeah. That's what the other moms are doing too. So we really need to remember, hey, she's, she's winning right now. Let's cheer for her. Let's celebrate. I love that. Yeah. And remember. Naturally, you don't you don't want to document the bad times. You naturally yeah. want to document the good times. Yes, exactly. I mean, even though I wrote a book on like imperfect moments and failures, none of them were talked about on social media. I didn't want to talk about those on social media. I wanted to talk about what I was excited about, what I was proud of. I mean, I'm proud of my books. Now I talk about that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I about, you know, all the good things that were happening to me. In my book, I talk about this morning that I call um, Zen Music and Bacon. So I woke up early and I have this Zen music playing and I got a whole breakfast feast of like organic food and pasture raised pork that we grew here <laughs> and all the stuff. And I think I'm killing it as a mom, right? Like, yeah, my kids woke up and refused to eat it. They were like, oh. we <laughs> and this is what happens as a parent. Like you understand you go through the work to make this awesome thing. I'm like, I'm really feeding my kids with good, wholesome foods today. And then they refuse to eat it. And they go into this whole negotiation with me about trying to get the suckers that I have hidden in the back of the cupboard that I didn't know they, they were there. They didn't know. I didn't know they <laughs> knew they were there. They're trying to convince me that they have one bite of eggs. Can they have a sucker instead? Like, they're just <laughs> I took a picture and I posted about my beautiful breakfast spread. But what I didn't share was that my kids didn't eat it. That they cried and complained and were like, I'm not eating this. We don't, we don't share those moments. Right. That's the part you don't see. You know, because as moms, we do go through hoops and a lot of work and trouble a lot of times to create these great moments for our kids. And then sometimes they're like, eh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, so and we don't true. post it. Hey, I took my kids on this great vacation, but they were complete but the whole time we were there and we're <laughs> friends and do X, Y, Z, we're just like, yeah. oh, look, we're at the beach. It's so beautiful. But yes, know, it won't stop hitting so-and-so and threw sand in another kid's face. We're not sharing that. And I think we need to yes. share because it's so relatable because we've all been there. We've all created perfect moments for our lives and our family for them to completely turn into the opposite of perfect. I love that. Thank you so much. And that's so true. <laughs> Those moments where, you know, you think, oh, this is so awesome and great. And then it blows up in your face. And you're right. Yeah. Those need to be shared more. Not just those perfect picture moments. Uh, is there a personal story you can share of a time that you felt less than perfect as a parent, but yet it all worked out okay? I have 274 pages of those. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I, I have, I do have an entire book written on those. You can actually read the first three chapters for free on Amazon before you purchase. But the interesting thing is while I was writing it, I was like, am I going to have enough imperfect moments to write this book? And I started writing and using Siri in my car as I was driving to transcribe things for me. I realized I had more than enough imperfect moments, more than I ever <laughs> Because when we have these imperfect moments, we block them out. It's, it's psychology. It's, it's a way that we can go on every day. So we don't always remember the bad moments always. But it was after I took the time to reflect on, I realized, wow, I, had, I have enough for book two if I wanted to write book two. Um, but an imperfect moment that I didn't share in my book. Hmm. <laughs> there, how much time do I have? Cause I have a few stories. <laughs> um, yeah. It can even be from your book. That's great. Anything um, you want to share? Hmm. I, I, one of them that didn't get added to my book, it, it's kind of a funny imperfect moment but it was imperfect when I looked back at it. And so my kids and I were driving to the orchard. So we were out on a Michigan country road 
And as I was driving down this country road and, you know, enjoying the view of the cornfields and, you know, feeling very like, yeah, I'm taking my kids to pick apples. There was a dog that ran across the street. And as a dog runner myself, I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, what is going on? And I see this guy like running after the dog. And they're heading down this country road and he's never going to catch up. So I stop my van. I have all my kids in my car. I stop the van and I say, Hey, hop in. <laughs> Is that your, do you want me to help you get your dog? You know, I'm thinking I'm helping the dog. Right. So he's like, yeah. Okay. So he hops in the car and we're chasing the dog. Stranger danger, maybe. <laughs> Didn't do this. He just hops in next to my two year old in the back and we're driving down the road and ahead of me, I see the dog, I see a Jeep stop and the dog jumps into the Jeep and they start to drive. Oh no. Thinking, oh crap. I was like, isn't that your dog? And he doesn't answer me because all I saw oh, wow. was driving, and a guy chasing the dog. I'm thinking it's his dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being a good Samaritan here. And so I pull up like, <laughs> like to block this other Jeep because I'm like, what is happening? Is this person stealing his dog? So now I yes. think like, there's a dog thief. So I'm like, hey, what are you doing? It's why, why are you taking this guy's dog? And she's like, Sheba, this is my dog. And the dog is oh, like, no. Face. And I'm like panicked in the front seat thinking, did I just let a murderer? in my car like <laughs> who is this guy like is could, could he just pull a gun on me right now and like carjack me because these things and the fact he just jumped right in oh sure I need a ride yeah <laughs> and so I look back at him I was like this ain't your dog and he's like well no <laughs> and, and I was like I'm so confused here and he's and I said well he said he was getting his dog and so the guy starts talking he was really slow like he wasn't all there to begin with. Like, I don't quite know what was going on, but like mentally not all there, but I didn't know that right away. He's, and he's like, well, I mean, it's not my dog. I uh, was babysitting, dog sitting, but my friend was dog sitting and he couldn't go. So I went to the house instead. So they had hired a dog sitter because they were out of town, which was this guy's friend. Well, he couldn't make oh. his friend come over to let the dog out. So this dog didn't know him. So his oh. friend, he, so the dog ran away from him and was like heading down the road. But it was like this. And I was like, you need to get out of the car. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Let's, yeah, let's so avoid just, any unnecessary situations. <laughs> it was just this hilarious. I mean, this is one of the lighthearted, imperfect moments, but like this could have went so bad. <laughs> yeah. And it just made me think, you know, I feel like we live in a pretty safe world and that we should be trusting. I mean, I'm definitely not just going to let a complete stranger jump in my car with all my kids. Right. In it. Next time it's <laughs> ended horribly. Like it could have been. A oh, very my goodness. So, <laughs> laugh. Well, they were like, you didn't you didn't add that to your book. I'm like, no, I didn't add that to my book. And they were like, <laughs> the murderer in the car because we still joke that he was like a serial killer or a murderer <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for, for sharing your imperfect moments with us and also your wisdom on this picture perfect persona and what we can do as moms to kind of combat that thank you betsy it's been a pleasure to talk with you today thank you all right thanks so much